In order to start using Google SketchUp, you can either open it from the icon setup placed on your computer desktop, or you can double click an SKP file. SKP stands for SketchUp, uh, but if you can't see the three letter extensions at the end of your file names, then uh, I guess I'll have to make another video. Uh, when this particular file opens, it tells me it was created in an older version of SketchUp, but that's okay. Uh, now, in, when you start, Show Tips on Startup is selected by default. And I'm just going to let this run for a while and uh, let us see the sorts of tips that are available and you get a quick idea of what you're about to be able to do. Now, I highly recommend checking out Google Earth and uh, I'll be making a video on that soon. Check out the additional resources, but let's check out our museum model. The first tool we'll check out is the Zoom tool. Look to the lower left of your window to, to see special notes about each tool. Notice in this example the field of view does not change, we just move farther away. The simplest way to get a graphic into your SKP file is to drag and drop it. Now see what happens when I just drag it from a folder on my hard drive? When we drag an image from a folder in next to an object or the building, we notice something really interesting. It wants to line up with different faces of the object. See, I'm clicking a new tool. That's the Move tool. And I read elsewhere that uh, you press the letter S on your keyboard to get a scale to tool. And you can drag the corners to change the size. So now you can try and get creative with your objects, bring them in and move them around. Um, you'll see it's not easy, it takes some getting used to using the tools. And uh, here you'll see I was having some frustration with the rotation tool. I learned how to make a protractor come up and it lines up automatically with the plane. It was hard to get it to line up with any other plane. And then Suddenly, one day I was uh, clicking in the right-click menu, and I just happened to stumble upon an interesting command uh, called Explode. If you right-click a plane or a flat object and explode it, you can use the Push-Pull tool to give it more dimensions. Now when we go back to the rotate tool, there are different planes and we can hopefully find the one and find a way to get the protractor to line up with a different plane. Ah, there we go. I finally realized I would have to resort to using one of my favorite tools, the orbit tool. The orbit tool is the one that makes it seem as if you're flying around your landscape in a helicopter. And now I can get the rotate tool to line up with the face in the way I want it. Or so I thought anyway, but uh, after a bit more messing around, I found that the most convenient way was to choose the select tool, right click, and make group. So the blue outline in indicates right away that they're grouped. That makes it much easier to manipulate. And at long last, I raise my obelisk from the floor of my planet. Nonetheless, you see there was some kind of residual. And uh, I couldn't explain that, but I moved my model around, or I hovered about my model, moved away my group, saw that I liked it. You can see where it's missing a piece. But uh, I choose the select tool, select the residual, and I press my delete key. Remember, of course, you're each pursuing your own creativity and everyone's model will be different. If you did uh, a thorough job in the earlier activities, then your objects relate uh, to your idea of localization 
As we head into the next activities, we'll export a 2D image of one of these scenes. You need the pro version of SketchUp in order to export a model that you can take into a 3D world. But I hope you've seen the power of 3D modeling, and I hope you've got some ideas for how you could build some rich curriculum using such software as this.